text messages from God. Text messages from God. And today we're going to, the message specifically is about read it. Read it. We have text messages from God and we can read them. Have you ever got a text message from God? You know, everyone pays attention to their text messages, right? I mean, if you want to get a hold of somebody, you want somebody to know that you're contacting them, you got a message to them, send them a text, right? That's kind of where we're at these days. And, uh, you know, especially if you're a teenager, uh, you could be in a job interview. If you get a text, you'd go, wait a second, I got, you know, I got something here. Maybe you'd be even meeting with the President of the United States. I'm sorry, President, I got a text message from, from Bobby and, you know, or whatever. But if they get a text message, no matter what the circumstances, they're probably going to check it out, right? So we got a couple of pictures we could throw up there. Or we got those? No? Yeah? There we go. Isn't that how we usually go out to eat? That's what happens. Everybody's on their phones. That ever happened to you? There. I'm getting married, but wait, I got a text message. <laughs> so that's kind of the way it is. I mean, those text messages uh, are so important. Those dings on those phones, just like we just can't bear not to look at it, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we could text God our questions about life and get an instant message back? But wait. He already sent you a message. He's already texted you. It's called the Bible. Amazing. So it may not come on our cell phones, but wait. There are apps on our phone that have his text to us called the scriptures, called the Bible. So it's time we stop looking at the Bible as just a rule book full of stories. It's more than that. It's how God speaks to us. It's how God communicates His will, purpose, plan, help, and everything else to us. God is communicating to us through the Word of God. He teaches us about Himself. He teaches us about how to live. It's in the Bible. You are getting text messages all the time. And of course the Holy Spirit will confirm that word and speak to our hearts. He's always with us. So let's discover in 2024 and every day of our lives how to read the Bible. How to connect with it. How to apply it to our everyday lives. Let's do that. No one ignores their text messages except when it comes maybe to God's Bible text. (laughs) There are statistics that say we are the most biblically illiterate in history. George Barna research says 65% of Americans believe the Bible contains most or all of the answers to life's most basic questions. Well, only 65%. And that might be a little bit high because, you know, it says that they believe the Bible contains most. (laughs) Or all. So there's a big part of those that just think, well, you know, it might answer a few questions for us. 28% report that they rarely, if ever, read the Bible. So one out of four people, more than one out of four, rarely or ever read the Bible. And I think these statistics might be a little bit old because it's it's getting, uh, you know, seems to be scarcer and scarcer, but you are here wanting to hear from God and hear his Bible text. Hear his text to us, his word to us, and we will keep sharing it. And we will keep letting everyone know the truths that God has brought into our hearts and lives. You know, so it's rare, some of those that it's rare if ever they read the Bible... It's kind of like a person who is starving. But right there beside them, if they would just open the door, is a 
restaurant. It's a buffet. All they have to do is walk in and have all the food they could ever imagine. All the sustenance they need is right available there. And we walk through life a lot of times saying, I need to know, I need to help, I need this or that, I need sustenance, I need strength. And it's always available. We could pull our smartphone out. We could read the whole Bible. We could read all of God's scripture. It's right there. It's available to us. We can go online. We can get the good old paper Bible on pages and read it. So, how can people live without a daily intake of God's word? How do they do it? Probably not very well. (laughs) Right? A daily intake of God's holy word. Now sure, there's been days where maybe I didn't read the Bible. But you know what? Maybe there's days where I read chapters and chapters of the Bible. And maybe as I'm going through my day, I remember those scriptures. I just love it after church and throughout the week. I find myself singing the songs that we were worshiping together with on Sunday. Now and, and now I'm still singing a lot of the Christmas songs, you know. But I'll just all of a sudden find myself that's going through my mind and heart. That's what the Word of God will do in us when we put it in us. When we receive the text from God. <laughs> we can't bear not to look at it. We can't bear not to miss it. That's what we need in our lives every day. How can people live without a daily intake of God's Word? You know, have you ever been in a meeting or you've been in in some situation or circumstance with others in a relationship and you came out of that and you feel like you were attacked, maybe you feel like you were defeated, maybe you were misunderstood, maybe you were unappreciated and you you just felt so bad... Maybe you're blindsided by something they said you weren't expecting and you just feel like, well, I just, just forget it then. I'm just going to quit. I'm just not going to be a part of that anymore. And that's happened to me as much as any, any of you. We've all probably experienced that in some manner, some way. You know, and after feeling down, maybe even feeling angry, contemplating, you know, how can I defend myself? How can I respond to what they have said? You know, we want to defend ourselves. Instead, the best thing that can happen is because we have received the text of God's Word into our hearts and minds. And we understand, you know what? I don't have to defend myself. I don't have to be contemplating in this way. Instead, I decide to forgive Instead, I decide to let it go. Isn't that a higher way? Isn't that God's way that we should walk? And the only way I could do that is because I've received a text from God. I've received His Word into my heart and I'm able to activate it because it's in me, because I've received it, because I dared receive it and look at it and read it instead of ignore it. And we know because we, we do this because of the Word. We do this because we know we're accepted by God. Because He's given us of His Holy Spirit. And we know He's with us. And it doesn't matter what others perceive, what they think of our performance or what we did or didn't do. It doesn't matter because He accepts us. He loves us. He causes us to be able to walk And continue to go forward. Jesus and his word will give us a soft place to land when we're falling. Isn't that wonderful? That he will lift us up. He will help us. But where does this relationship with Jesus come from? Where where does this help come from? Where does his word? Well, how do we have that strength to carry on? It's from all the times that I've had and that you've had when we had devotions, when we've spent time within the Word with God, when we remembered what He 
has spoken to us in our hearts from reading the Bible, from hearing uh, a, a message that's been preached, or whatever the case might be, the Holy Spirit reminds us we are helped and we're able to instead forgive because we know the Bible says we can forgive as the Lord has forgiven us. We're able to realize that we don't allow a root of bitterness to grow up within us. We realize that we repay no one evil for evil. But we're able to live with each person in peace. Because of that which God has spoken to us. Because we listened and heard His voice in His Word. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter and the 16th verse. We're going to look at this verse. It says, your words, your words are what sustain me. Your words are what sustain me. They are food to my hungry soul. They bring joy to my sorrowing heart and delight me. How proud I am to bear your name, O Lord. Do you feel like you're weak? Do you feel like you're weary? He says your words are what sustain me. Do you need sustenance for 2024? (laughs) Do you need sustenance for today? Your words are what sustain me. The Word of God is what will sustain us and feed us and strengthen us and help us and equip us. (laughs) Since they are food to my hungry soul. Are you hungry for more of what God has? Are you hungry for sustenance? It is food for our hungry soul. And it brings joy. Are you, do you have sorrow? Are you weary and well doing? Are you hurting? They bring joy. So how can I get over this sorrow, this hurt, this pain? Feed yourself the Word of God. Allow that sustenance to come into you. And it brings joy to our sorrowing heart and delight. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, wow, you know, my life is so boring. Oh, it's so, You know, monotonous is so this or that. I just need some fun. I just need something to delight me. Get a text message from God. (laughs) Get a word from God. Get a leading from Him of what to do and how to step, how to walk with Him every day. How to... Relate to others with the love that He has shared with us. How to forgive when it seems impossible. And you'll be able to have delight because you'll be able to live above. You'll be able to walk above the mundane of the world. Because He fills us with joy in our hearts. Because He's spoken to us. We have a hot text message from God. (laughs) We have a hotline from heaven. And we can bear his name and be rejoicing. So ask yourself, where do you turn when things are not going so well? And you need strength. You need help. You need peace. Do you turn to the TV? Do you turn to your computer? Do you turn to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse? Do you turn to alcohol or drugs uh, when things aren't going well, when you're hurting? You know, even the best spouse in the world will let you down at some point. But my spouse has never. But (laughs) thankfully God has sent every one of us a sustaining text message. That brings great joy. Brings great delight. And guess what? We don't have to wait till Sunday morning. We can receive His Word 24-7, 365. This year, 366. Sleep year. You get an extra day in the Word of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
A Dexter Day feeding yourself with sustenance from heaven. You don't have to wait till now. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you're receiving. But you can open your Bible. You can open your app. You can do whatever you need to do. My app has like, I don't know, 20 different translations. I can read it again and again in different ways. It's so wonderful. So, we have said, most don't read their Bibles on a regular basis. The reasons we give, well, I'm too busy. You know, I'm too busy. Or, I've heard this before, well, you know, I just don't like to read. I'm just not a reader. I tried to read, but it was confusing. So I just gave up. So here's some help to read, understand, and enjoy the best-selling book in the world. Principles to get, your re- to get you reading the Bible. Number one, have a place, time, and plan. Have a place, time, and plan. In the Old Testament, a, a man named Daniel, he had a place, he had a time, he had a plan. Remember, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, but yet came out without even a bite or a scratch or anything. The angels came and stopped, you know, shut their mouths. And why did this happen? Why was he thrown into the lion's den? Well, they were, the other leaders were jealous of Daniel because he had a good relationship with the king Darius there and he was rising in power and rising in responsibility. So the, those other kings, the, those other leaders, those other administrators were jealous and they went to, king, to the king and said, let's make a law. See, they concocted this plan. It was all thought out. It was all agreed upon. So they go to the king and say, let's make a, a new law that we should only pray to the king. That's the only person you can pray to. You can't pray to anything else. Only to the king as their God. I think it was for 90 days. They knew Daniel prayed every day. And not only did he pray every day, they knew that he prayed at a certain place and a certain time three times a day. Because he lived it openly. He was always a prayer. And it was easy to catch, he was easy then to be, to be caught in this, or he would have to turn from his God and his plan, his place of prayer, and so forth. And it says in Daniel 6 and verse 10, it says, But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual (laughs) in his upstairs room. With its windows open toward Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Just as he had always done. Just as he had always done. He always prayed. How did Daniel do all these incredible and wonderful things for God? I mean, you know, read the book of Daniel. He interpreted the dreams and all these things that God did through him. How he came out of that lion's den. It's because he had a relationship with God. And he had always done this. And he gave thanks to his God. So Daniel had these three things. He had a place, a time, and a plan. And if you don't have these, then it might be more difficult for you to pray, to receive the Word of God. Because in the time of prayer is where the Bible, the Word of God, is so important. When we're talking to God, He can talk to us through His Word. So those things are linked together. And with the Holy Spirit, we can receive God's direction and help and strengthening and sustenance. And so the first one is place. He had an upstairs room with its window open toward Jerusalem. And there are times when I'm excited to read the Bible. And there are times when it takes sheer discipline. But having a place makes it easier, doesn't it? What is your place? Maybe it's in your car on your way to work. That's your place. Ah, I'm here. The world is shut out, except for you know, all those crazy drivers. But anyway, <laughs> you're able to pray maybe on your way to work, on your way home from work. So that's the time. What time? He had three set times a day. 
He prayed three times a day. When does it work for you that you can stick to it? Maybe it's more in the morning with your coffee or your tea or your cereal or whatever you, you do for breakfast. Your eggs and bacon. Oh, I don't want to make everybody hungry. But anyway, morning. Maybe it's during your break at work or between classes if you go to school. Maybe it's before you go to bed. And a lot of times we say, well, I just don't have enough time. When we say that, it's really a heart issue. It's a decision that we have to make that it has to be that important. That we will shut other things out and we will choose to spend time in the Word of God and in prayer. See, because we make time for the most important things in our lives, don't we? We make time. You have to make time for it. And it becomes a habit. It becomes so ingrained in you just as Daniel, even though he says he learned that the law had been signed. He just went back as usual to prayer and realizing that they might do what they did because it was more important it was more important it was more important the word of God is more important the word of God is more important (laughs) it's the most important his word is even exalted above his name the Bible says the word of God his promises Jesus says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Talking about Jesus, and that Word became flesh and dwelt among us as we celebrated Christmas together. The Word came and dwelt among us. The Word is with us. The Word can be in us. The Word is spoken. The Word is read. And we are reading that Word. And then putting it in our hearts. I mean, you can make time for the most important things. And the Bible is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, is our relationship with God and others. We get the Bible. I mean, you're like, well, I don't like to read. Well, get the Bible in an app. Get it on your phone. Everybody these days has a phone. Everybody has a smartphone. I mean... Get you version or some other kind of app. I've got one that's my daily Bible reading app. And then I've got one that, you know, you can use for study or whatever you want to do. And you can, well, you know, I don't like to sit there and try to read it. It will read it to you. Uh Uh-oh, no excuse, some boy. (laughs) Just Click on it and all of a sudden it starts reading it to you. And then you can hear it. So it can be on your way to work or school or in the car. Whatever it is. It can be on your lunch break. Put your earbuds in, whatever. So he had a place. He had a time. And he had a plan. Because it says as usual. As he had always done. It was his plan. Get a... Get a, a Bible version you can understand. I mean, the King James Version is great if your name is Shakespeare. And you live in England and it's the 17th century. Use something that you can understand. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the King James Version. If you like it, you can understand it. Hey, go for it. It's just a translation that is a wonderful translation. You can use the New Living Translation or the English Standard Version. There's so many. Compare them. Read them. Read them all. Get the Bible with life application or study notes. Well, I just don't know how to apply this. I just don't know how to study this. There's Bibles that will basically lead you step by step. Go to the Wednesday night Bible study. Go to Celebrate Recovery. Go, you know, do whatever you can do. Reading the Bible will cause us to grow spiritually and we will know or do what we could not do before. (laughs) We'll be able to believe at a higher level. Thank God for the faith we have, the faith that that caused you to be here today. But we can grow in our faith and it comes from the Word of God. We will be able to, instead of speaking without thinking... (laughs) We'll be able to hold our tongue instead of lashing out. 
Because we've received the truth of the word of God. We've grown in our faith. We can have, we can have faith versus giving up. We can quote a verse to someone who needs it. And we'll even, even surprise ourselves sometimes. What will come out of our mouths? When someone needs the word of God. And we'll go, wow, I didn't even know I knew that. You know, And so God is so good that he will bring what we need and he will put it in our mouths because we put it in our hearts. I want you to know that you can know the Bible like a pastor. Even more than a pastor. It's up to you. You can grow and learn. I mean, you know, I, I researched it. There's, there's a Bible studies on the internet, free ones. You can just, you could go to Bible school. And just learn everything you can possibly learn. It's all available to us. It's amazing. Free Bible schools. There's, you know, YouTube videos. There's, I mean, we can, we can watch and hear and learn the Bible 24-7, 365, 366. If you want to. You can know more about the Bible than I do. And that'll be okay. Because I am not, you know... I'm not a genius. I haven't arrived. I have a lot more to learn. I'm still learning. I'm still learning to apply what I do know. Psalm 19 verse 7 says, The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Well, I'm just a simple man. I just don't know, you know. I just... You can become wise. No matter how simple our lives are. Or that we want them to be. The Bible is not just for scholars. It's how we are made wise for life. <laughs> what joy it brings to parents when our kids go to children's church and they come home and they know a Bible verse. They know how God speaks to them. They've received a text message from God. And they recite it or they re- talk about what they learned. If kids can get it, we can get it. We can be wise for life. And we should be filling our kids with that. Let's see what this video says about kids' faith. Okay, guys, what is faith? Uh, Faith is... It's kind of like a... Uh, could you hold the camera? I just need to think. Hey. Uh, God? Faith is not far. Faith is when you have courage to do something and you do it and you believe you can do it. Uh, um, if you like think that you can't do something, but then you believe that you can do it. It's when you believe something before you see it. And you're obeying God. Is that right? Or is that the wrong answer? Faith is believing without seeing. You can feel it and you can see it in your head before you um, see it. Um, believing that something's going to happen and trusting God. Faith is believing in something that you cannot see, feel, or have any way of seeing it. Well, you can actually see it, but I mean, like, you can see it. Having faith is like seeing it in the future. There we go. We got to teach the kids, got to teach ourselves what faith is all about. Another thing that we can do to help us learn and grow in the Bible and read the Bible is know the context. Someone will say, well, you say I need Jesus to go to heaven. That's your interpretation. Right? That's your interpretation. We all have our own interpretation. How is God, you know, to me and to you and so forth? So what they're really trying to say is that everyone's interpretation is equal and that the Bible can mean different things to different people. Well, that's what you believe about God. This is what I believe about God. No, it's based upon the Bible. And it's based upon its truth. So video, this video here shows 
uh, the right interpretation really does matter. So let's see this quick video. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächters. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sink. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? There, am I on now? There. It's important to have the right interpretation. Or something bad can happen. So, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. There we go. As we serve and work and live for God, we can rightly handle the word of truth. We can present ourselves to God approved because we have grown in the word of truth. So how do we do this? Well, we got to, as we said, know the context. So a lot of times we will read something and we can take it out of context. We can take it, people can use a scripture to say something that is not meant to say because they take it out of context. And so what we need to do is know the context. I mean, uh, the simple thing that we can do is we can read the introduction page of each book of the Bible. I mean, yes, other people read that, other scholars and so forth uh, wrote that. And so we, we can read that because they have tried to find the context and we, that can help us. And we can find out who wrote it, why they wrote it, the time period they wrote it in. We can find definitions for words in, you know, sometimes in the back of the Bible, things like that. Read the verses, how to know what it's trying to say to us. Read the verses around it. A lot of times, instead of just reading that verse, sometimes I have to go and say, oh, well, I'm going to have to read this whole chapter. Because I have to find out what is he really trying to say here. Because we can make it say anything else if we don't compare it to the surrounding context. Compare it to the character of God. <laughs> If God is speaking to me, his character is one of faithfulness, lovingness. You know, he's the provider and so forth. We can compare that scripture to the whole Bible on the same subject matter. We can do a subject study of ourselves. How often does the Bible speak of this subject? How often does he talk about it? Right? And we can get a better context and understanding of what God is saying by comparing Scripture, the truth, to truth. There you go. And help us understand what He is speaking to us. We can ask questions. We can ask God in prayer to show us. And so if someone is thinking, <laughs> we won't think they're just thinking. <laughs> okay? Remember, we've talked about the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. And ultimately, He will bring it to our remembrance. He will bring it to our understanding. Because He testifies of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We can ask parents. We can ask small group leaders. We can ask Christian friends who you know are faithful in the Word of God. We can grow together. We can know the context. We can read it. We can know the context. We can grow in our walk with God. And it will become exciting to learn and grow. It's so wonderful when someone comes up to me and says, Hey, did you know the Bible said this? Wow, this is so wonderful. Changes their life. The Word of God is the power of salvation. The Word of God will bring blessing and salvation to our lives. And finally, Romans 10, verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes from hearing the Word and keep hearing the Word. Well, I read that scripture 10 years ago. It was really good. No, faith comes today. Now faith is. You need faith today. You need to hear it again. And God will re reveal it even greater to your heart. 
As you read your text from God, your faith will grow and you will live for him. And you'll be able to live full of God. Live in faith every day. And others will want to follow your faith. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each person here today that we will grow in the word because we know it's God speaking to us and it will equip us and strengthen us and help us. And when we're weary or we're sad or where we're having a difficult situation, it will lift us up and it will cause us to have joy and delight in our lives and to be overcomers through Christ. Thank you, Lord. The word is powerful. We thank you for that powerful word in us and it, that it will become powerful in our hearts and it will be powerful in our mouths as we speak it into our hearts and lives to others. We thank you, Father, for leading and guiding us and the Holy Spirit being our teacher. We thank you for bringing great understanding and revelation of truth so that we might live the life God has for us. And others will want what we have because of our joy in the Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name.